Hey, what's up, plant nerds? Good to see you here on Grassroots Gardening. I'm Ryan, and uh, we've got a beautiful Sunday here at the house. Thought we'd go walk around the yard a little bit, and uh, that's not a tarantula on my neck. Pay that no attention. Just trying out my new DJI microphone with the little wind thing on it. So, I've noticed in some of my videos, the wind kind of rattles it around and makes noise. But anyway, again, it's just an absolute gorgeous day here at the house. It's about 60 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. And I'm gonna walk down here in the woods in a minute and show you guys some native azaleas that are blooming. And we're just gonna kind of walk the driveway, see what's happening. We got a lot of work to do this spring and summer. So we're gonna kind of go get us a game plan of things that we wanna add. And our driveway's kind of long, so uh, it's gonna be a little bit of walking. So today's March 19th. So tomorrow is official day of spring. However, as you can see, on this Ely Agnes, all this new growth that pushed out when we had 70 and 80 degree weather uh, while we were going to Vegas for Con Expo, the big construction exposition in Vegas last week, it got pretty cold, got down into the 30s, maybe even high 20s. And you can see a lot of this new growth got burned. And that happened on a lot of stuff in the yard, unfortunately. And even this week, we're supposed to have some some more cold weather. So we've got the frost cloth on everything down at the nursery. Uh, just kind of doing the best we can until spring decides it finally wants to get here. So hopefully another week or two and uh, we won't have to worry about freezing temperatures anymore. But we're gonna walk down this really steep bank right here and check out this beauty right here. So I did not plant this. This is a wild, native deciduous azalea has gorgeous pink flowers on it and the structure of the plant i just love it you know it looks a little bit leggy compared to a uh, you know an azalea that you see in the yard but i love the structure of it and it just looks so natural down here in this this woodland bottom so we're kind of down in uh in a little valley here we'll have a lot of ferns that'll pop up. There's a natural spring head right down there. And that whole bottom will just be mainly ferns and uh, other, you know, bog type vegetation. We've got a big dogwood. Let's see if I can zoom in. It's not blooming quite yet. So we've got a nice big dogwood right there in the middle of this valley. But I love these native azaleas. I wish there were, there were more of them. Got a couple more down. They were not blooming just yet, but isn't that pretty, y'all? Not a whole lot happening uh, on the first curve of the driveway coming from the house. Looks like this big canna lily is starting to wake up, so that's a good sign. We've got an azalea back here putting on some growth. Scares me a little bit though, just because, uh, like I said, we're going to get some more cold weather. And thank goodness this red bud made it through the winter. You can see it budding out there because this one is really, really special. It doesn't even have a name yet. But this is one that my buddy Aaron, who uh, is in charge of City of Aiken uh, Horticulture Program, won this one for me at an auction. And so this one is from uh, Mr. Dennis Werner, who is, uh, I consider, a famous red bud uh, hybridizer. He's come out with some really cool cultivars and this is one of them. So we're going to watch it, see what it does and um, you know just see what its its traits are. It looks like it's a pretty dwarf specimen but that one's pretty special to me so I'm really glad that it made it through the winter. And here we have another red bud. I think this one is our variegated uh, Carolina Sweetheart. This one did just fantastic last year. I might have did a video on it, I can't remember. Uh, but just a really nice tree. And I love those leaves, especially with that sun shining down through it. That is just really gorgeous. And uh, it's blooming right now as well. And I uh, tried, tried to plant a good many red buds right here in this little area in hopes that you know they might cross pollinate themselves just with the help of some bees. This one is uh, Rising Sun, which 
It was one of my absolute favorites, maybe even my most favorite. It just has really cool foliage. Um, every limb will have dark green fading all the way out to like a peach. So it'll go green, light green, almost yellow, like an apricot, and uh, finally out here, kind of a peach color. We'll, we'll definitely keep an eye on this one as the season progresses and you guys can check it out. Redbuds have such a funky stem growth habit. So you can see how it's just almost like a zigzag and they just kind of do that naturally. But this one's gonna be a real showpiece. And then down here, uh, this was a cultivar I found a few years ago called Black Pearl. Real dark colored heart-shaped leaf as all red buds have heart-shaped leaves. Well, this one's just a real dark burgundy purple. So we'll kind of watch it too and see what it does. So we've got our uh, unnamed hybrid back there. We've got our Carolina Sweetheart, Rising Sun, and then Black Pearl. And I've got some flamethrowers in another section of the driveway. Uh, this was, or still is, you can see it got got burnt by the cold too. Everything did. It really, it sucks when the weather tricks everything to to bloom and start pushing new growth and then it gets cold and burns it all. But that one's a Japanese magnolia called Frank's Masterpiece. It has a really pretty purple bloom and it's already done for the year. Blooming anyhow. This is a, a fig who again suffered through the freezing temperatures last week. This one I believe is called um, Miss Figgy. Yeah, it's kind of a shorter tree, tons of really, really big, I mean like huge figs on it. So hopefully it'll be okay if we can make it through this next week. And then this one, I don't know the exact name of it, um, but this is a cold hardy uh, citrus. I think it's some, maybe some type of orange. We'll have to watch it. Still got some green growth to it, but a lot of it got really hurt last week as well and same with our vitex this is a uh, flip side you can see there on the tag this is the chase tree um, i know i did a video on one uh, of a vitex last year great small tree great for pollinators nice purple flowers that come out on it but the flip side well the reason they call it that when the leaf flips over it has a purple underside so green on the top and purple on the underside it looks really nice when the wind blows it just kind of a real interesting interesting shrub our palms got hit hard they're not looking so good that sago right there got burnt real bad uh, there's another fig that i planted right there this japanese maple definitely going to worry about it is that uh, that growth right there is brand spanking new and it's more than likely going to get get hit. This one is a uh, yellow bird. So the AP is Aether palmatum, yellow bird. I'm not familiar with this variety. So we're going to watch it too and see what it does this year. Our uh, fire chief Thusia right here got nailed. It looks horrible. Plus the deer have just been giving me hell on the whole property. Um, they're just coming and grazing on everything, knocking it over. This is, let's see, I don't know what that, one, oh, that's Cleara. That's what that is. And uh, deer evidently like Cleara because they have mowed this thing almost to the ground. And those buttholes came over here a few weeks ago and started rubbing on this Benny, let's see, what is this one? Benny, Benny Comanche, Japanese maple. So look what they did to the bark stripped it actually ripped it out of the ground it was laying right over here i thought louise hit it with the lawnmower but the uh the deer didn't like it planted there and they just uh, kicked it out of the ground with their horns antlers uh but beautiful look at this red growth coming out of this thing but again worried about it with the the cold and then the deer really pissed me off with this this was my um, let's see what's the name of it. Okay, finally thought of it. 
This is my Biltmore Blue that I got from uh, the guys at MrMaple.com. It was a dwarf pine, a pretty special one too. Um, I'm pretty sure I did a video on it, but <laughs> what was what it was was a sport that came off of a white pine up at the Biltmore Estate, and they hired a marksman to come in, shoot it off the tree, and then they grafted it to uh, to a white pine rootstock. But it's just got a real pretty blue or had a real pretty blue tint to it. So deer do not like dwarf pines because they just killed it. As we continue up the driveway, we've got us a Nellie R. Stevens holly right here. This thing will be loaded down with berries in the winter. Although, before we left last week, this thing was in full bloom and it looks like the cold might have zapped all of our our buds, but uh, super nice evergreen tree has a real, I don't know if I'm saying this right, param <laughs> it grows like a pyramid. I was gonna say pyramidal, but I don't know if that's the right term. But anyway, real nice pyramid cone shape up to probably 25 feet, maybe 15 to 20 at the base when it gets mature, but just a beautiful evergreen holly. Then as we kind of go over here, this is our sad hillside. This one's gonna be probably uh, the best before and after example that we do uh, here on the channel. Super easy to plant up here. This is a sand hill, so we're probably gonna do a lot of grasses and some drought resistant stuff. Right now we've just got a, an Eliagnus up here that I know y'all tired of me saying cold damage, but that's what happened to it. And I've got some grasses planted up here. I think this might be some sea oats and uh, some type of cedar that I've planted that looks really, really sad. And uh, the reason I'm showing this to you guys, I'm not super <laughs> proud of it, obviously, as it sits right now. But the fun thing is gonna be for you guys to watch this transition. So this spring, we're gonna do a lot of planting and we're gonna get this thing mulched, get it looking looking really good. The boys built a bicycle trail <laughs> right through the center of our bed, but hey, yeah. we all gotta work and play together. We've got us a, uh, looks like a pindo palm up here that is struggling. We also gotta come and check all of our sprinklers really soon, make sure that we can irrigate. We're gonna bring some good stuff compost in and just amend the soil and then plant the hell out of it all the way around the driveway. This is a really neat specimen that I'm happy to see still alive. This is a weeping buddleia. So a weeping butterfly bush. You can see how the uh, bloom sets go, you know, more in a down habit versus kind of straight out like on your standard butterfly bush. I bought this one at an auction too, so I've never seen another one. Maybe we can propagate off of it and sell a couple at the nursery. Got a little palm there that didn't make it. We've got a little what's left of a purple pixie. It got fried, all of its new growth too. Really love this plant. It's the only weeping lower petal of them that I know of. And they look really cool when they cascade over a hillside. And that was kind of my plan for this guy here. But uh, we've really got to get in here and fertilize this stuff and get it mulched and take care of it because it's all struggling pretty bad right now. And if y'all remember the video we did here, this is on our Duke's Garden, uh, Japanese plum yew. Remember we planted those three right there. They're doing good. Got some new growth coming on them, but we need to remulch this whole area here. We just don't have time, man running all the businesses and trying to plant and film and edit and you know my mulch piles just sit here as there simply isn't enough time so we'll see if we can enlist some help and get this driveway looking like I want it here in the coming weeks and months. This is a uh, <laughs> what's left of a distillium so this is a linebacker and it got fried as well so we'll come in here after the danger of the cold is gone, prune it back. 
fertilize it, make sure it's getting hit by the sprinkler system and it should do fine. So we'll just continue walking down the driveway here just to give you your bearings. There's the house over there. This is where I dumped a load of our good stuff compost and just been kind of using it to plant with. So I just leveled it out. We're gonna come in here and plant something. I'm not exactly sure just yet, but plant something right there. Uh, eventually, you know, this is a year, couple year plan, but I wanna have Japanese maples all down through that valley. Uh, there is the uh, native azalea we were looking at a while ago. So I want to have that whole valley just full of Japanese maples. And here is another very, very sad part of the driveway. The deer have just, uh, again, given me hell. This was a really beautiful uh, snow on the mountain camellia. And they just ate just on my, about every bit of it. Had another camellia right here again they just tore it all to pieces got a japanese maple there that's sprouting another one that's doing pretty good back here let's see what variety this guy is this is arakawa i forgot exactly what it does but it's butted out looks like it's going to do good if the deer will leave it alone we've got a hawk huge hawk up there being chased by some crows right now but there are a lot of random stuff planted through here. But again, the deer have just annihilated like 90% of my shrubs. This is the uh, Japanese Pieris. Now they're eating the leaves, the stems, everything. So we're really going to have to search hard for some deer resistant plants. I've even been nibbling on my Japanese maples. Um, this one is, let's see here, using these metal tags. This is winter red, using these metal tags. So we've got, I've got over a hundred different cultivars of Jap maples and I can't keep them all straight, but that's a real pretty red bark Japanese maple. Uh, let's see what else we got. So this is a oak leaf hydrangea that deer evidently like as well. All the tops are gone, but it is leafing out. So hopefully, you know, it can get itself established and get big and maybe they'll leave it alone. They ate that azalea back there. And holy crap, they're not supposed to like this one. But this is Podocarpus, but uh, there's proof that deer will even eat Podocarpus. Golly, I don't know what we're gonna plant down here, y'all. I mean, they're eating everything. This is a uh, really nice weeping Japanese maple. This is Orangiola. Look at that beautiful leaf color. This one turns bright orange in the fall and uh, they even nibble on it too. Hopefully, again, this stuff can just get big enough where they either can't get to it or we just plant the hell out of this whole area and just uh, cross our fingers and maybe with spring coming you know, they'll find more to eat out in the woods. But look what they did. They just stripped this entire big camellia all the way up to where they can't, can't really reach. So hopefully that one's gonna live. Let's see what other, got a lot of Jap maples over here. Uh, this one is, let's see here. No, that's another Arakawa. All right, got two Arakawas back here. And this one's a weeping form of something, Mr. T. And another one I got from uh, the fellows up at Mr. Maple. Look at those nice big stems and huge leaves coming out on Mr. T. This one, uh, we lost the tag off of it, so we're just gonna have to watch him, see what he does. This one, I uh, really like the name of it. For those of you that know me and know what I'm going through in my personal life right now, that's uh, very fitting. I'll leave that alone. Um, let's see, got a couple more Jap maples in here. I'm not gonna go through every one of them because they're not really doing a whole lot right now. This is our sunshine ligustrum that the deer did a good job of uh, <laughs> like making a nice little topiary out of it for me. 
I don't know what we're gonna do with these deer, y'all. Um, oh, I do got one thing planted down here. Oh, it did live, awesome. I got this from Woodlanders Nursery up in Aiken. So that's a variegated Calicarpa Americana or Beautyberry. So uh, I believe this one has a traditional purple berries, but I love anything variegated, if you guys know me. And that is just a cool leaf. I think this one's called Splashy. Just a really neat cultivar there that I hope to be able to propagate off of. Another Jap maple right here, I do believe. Or either a Korean maple. Let's see. This is, oh, peaches and cream. So this is a, yeah, this is a Japanese maple. It's kind of like the Ghost series. has real uh, dark veining. Nice tips on it. This will be a really beautiful one if we can get it to adulthood. Oh, y'all, it's such a pretty day today. I am just loving life, man. It's beautiful. And we can just make it to the end of next week. We'll be in the mid-80s, and we'll be, we'll be in fine shape then. Got some variegated ivy planted down here. Now, this is kind of a funny story. So I got mad at Luis one day as I was leaving the house. It looked like he had taken pruned all the way up there and gave this thing a stupid bowl haircut. And so I called him. I was like, dude, why did you prune that ivy like that? He said, I didn't. The deer did it. So the deer ate all the way up to right there and just made the thing look just really stupid. But thank goodness it's coming back now. And I want it to kind of just cover this whole brick column. But beautiful variegation on that English ivy. <clears throat> then over here, again, the cold did its damage to our, uh, is it creeping fig? I can't even talk. Uh, climbing fig or creeping fig. Can't remember the botanical name to it, but it just kind of glues itself to the, to the brick as you see there. But it, uh, it got hit pretty bad too. All right, let's go see what we got happening. Uh, this is the first bed as you're coming to the house. This is the first one that's irrigated. Got a big tea olive there that, again, has damage. This is, um, we gotta come in here and prune this up, but this is our Confederate rose. So a hibiscus mutabilis. Has beautiful flowers in the late fall. Looks like we've got some uh, radicans, gardenias right here that the deer have fortunately not touched. So we're just gonna have to do trial and error, plant stuff, see what they eat and, and see what they don't. We lost about half of our bottle brush, which um, isn't so bad. These can't handle a lot of cold. So I'm actually happy that half of it is still alive. The ones down at the nursery where we lost all together. Got another little buddleia here, another Podocarpus that the deer have pruned for us. And then a red leaf Japanese maple who has lost its tag. So we'll have to kind of wait and see. We've got to come down here and prune that big. Uh, this is a maybe royal night or dark night buddleia. Has real dark purple blooms on it. And uh, lower petalum suffered from the cold as well. So just a lot of pruning we're gonna have to do it, do down here. A lot of cleaning up. Another tea olive back there. This one I forget the name of it, but the deer like it too. Let's see here. Green spire. Green spire what? I forget. I'll have to look that one up. But whatever it is, the deer have tore it up. So Ton or ton of work we got to do down here. Got to come get these limbs up. Oh my God. My list just keeps growing and growing. And some more deer pruned azaleas right there. So just to show you how far we've come, I guess we've come about an eighth of a mile. There's the gate and the driveway loops up and goes back down to the house there. There are the ponds that my dad built. A uh, good many years ago, a little pump house for the irrigation. So we're going to keep walking down the driveway now 
and go over to the garden area. Dad's been working really hard down there, bringing in some coffee grounds, bringing in some compost. He's chomping at the bit to plant his corn because traditionally he plants every year on the 15th, but with the cold, we just haven't been able to. So let's go over there and see what, uh, what he's got going on. And it won't be long, we'll be in the big garden planting all kinds of vegetables. Here's our little windmill that I fished out of the landfill. Somebody threw it away and Luis made me a couple new blades for it and got it spinning. I planted a Lady Banks on this last year and it looks like it did not make it. So we just got some new ones in at the nursery. I really want Lady Banks yellow rose climbing up that. So we'll steal one from the nursery maybe today when we go down and water up and check on things to bring back to plant. All right, we made it over here to the garden area and uh, finally talked in to Dad to getting us a new Kubota. So uh, he's got a cab. He can ride in the AC or turn the heat on if it's cold, and that's a really nice tractor. He's got the rototill hooked up behind it and got the garden looking really good, nice and smoothed out. Before we go in there, though, I want to show you guys this native bush over here, small tree. This is a pearl bush is the common name. Uh, X corda racemosa, I believe, is the botanical name, but it's got beautiful white flowers on it. Uh, kind of like, similar to a dogwood, you know, in, in color and size, but just a little more um, longer petals. This is a really nice native shrub. We've got them all throughout the, the understory. They love to grow in uh, under the pines and kind of filtered filtered sun. This one's probably 12 foot tall or so. Um, they're just a really, really nice uh, native shrub and Proven Winters, I believe, has a, a cultivar called something blizzard. I'm gonna see if I can find it because obviously if it's growing native and wild out here, you know, it can handle our conditions and natives just do, uh, do fantastic. So I'm gonna see if I can't find that one for us, bring it into the nursery. But anyway, let's go into the garden over here and uh, hopefully we don't bog up. We had a good bit of rain not too long ago and so it's going to be pretty pretty muddy, I'm sure. Our old owl made it through the winter and you can see we've got uh, our cable stretched around the entire garden. That's the only way to keep the deer out. Rabbits still sneak through, but uh, they don't eat a whole lot, so we don't, we don't tend to worry about them too much. It looks like Dad's already been down here checking on things, probably just seeing how wet it is, and it's pretty, it's pretty boggy. I got probably two inches of rain the other day, but garden looks really good, nice and leveled out. And he's been gardening down here for years and years and years, and it's just nice black humus soil. Uh, we added some coffee grounds and some of the good stuff not too long ago, if you saw that video. And then he brought down just a little bit more too to kind of elevate um, the, the, the garden area because it's clay up underneath. And so we do kind of tend to hold water down here, which can be not a good thing. But won't be long here now, guys. And we are gonna fill this thing up, uh, corn first. We're gonna do squash, butter beans. Uh, maybe dad always does purple hull beans too. Uh, we're just going to plant a little bit of everything, especially this year, because I want to experiment a lot with some different veggies. So it's going to be a fun year, guys. Just can't wait for this weather to finally warm up and we can get in here and we are just going to have a blast. All right, guys, I'm going to hoof it back to the house. We've got to go down to the nursery and water and feed the birds. But uh, we're going to have so much fun this season, the spring and summer, uh, getting this driveway looking good garden our asses off down here in the big garden so now would be a great time to hit that like and subscribe to down there uh, doesn't cost anything only takes two seconds we appreciate it and we're looking forward to gardening with you guys and as always the more you know the more you grow see y'all in the next video